direct to you and in your face. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. And I see the Obama counter. I'm just going to tell you right now, not just being flu pandemic being their cover, unless we expose it, but staging Oklahoma-style attacks domestically to shore up support for a foreign operation or maybe finally completing the Clinton era stage terror of finally saying the homegrown terrorists are working with al-Qaeda, a, 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 a plan, a script they plan to go with in 95 but backed off of and just went with the homegrown. So I see this in the cards. I see this in the tea leaves as I stand over the cauldron here. I'm asking you with that data, are you not seeing this chatter or do you have a comment? Well, I would certainly say that uh, if you go back to the 1990s, the, the militias were uh, heavily infiltrated and to some degree a project. Some of them were founded uh, by the FBI and by the domestic counterintelligence and counterinsurgency apparatus. And if you look in my book, 9-11 Synthetic Terror, I've got a whole thing in there about, uh, in particular, activities of British intelligence, because this was the... Uh, the playground in particular of British intelligence inside the U.S. And the advantage of using the British is that they, they are, they're not susceptible to U.S. congressional investigations. In other words, you can, you can do operations at arm's length. Often the British invite the U.S. to come into the United Kingdom and do things for them. And the U.S., the CIA, and so forth will invite the British to come over here exactly. and do things. They also use Andreas Strassmeyer, whose father was a top SS general, it, it later turned out he was uh, secret police anti-terror squad from Germany. They brought him to Honcho, the white supremacist, uh, and McVeigh and others out of Elohim City. That came out in FBI documents. So I knew you'd be up on this. I know synthetic terror covers it. It's now coming out that Hal Turner was an FBI informant. The FBI admits that in court. Uh, it's now turning out that almost all these major white supremacist groups are not infiltrated, but run by the feds, by the British, by the Germans, and by Israel. Israel uh, is uh, is also, uh, you know, you have these white supremacist commanders with classic, you know, Jewish archetypal Ashkenazi features. I've been to some of these events to protest them, and it's like, my God, there's the ADL on stage. Like Adam Gadon, the Al Qaeda leader, you know, ADL grandson, you know, the grandson of the ADL head. Uh, arrested for beating up Muslims, and then suddenly he joins, and he's the guy fighting Al Qaeda. So great points. Elaborate on that because I see them rolling that out now. Well, the uh, the the, F, the 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 Ku Klux Klan. Just to focus on them, the Ku Klux Klan is, as far as I can see, a wholly owned subsidiary of the FBI, and nothing but. So this is an apparatus of domestic provocateurs, and and you're very right to say now the way that the the ideological. Um, uh, conflict is going, right? The ideological fronts are turning once again, and there obviously is a temptation to begin this demonization. And when you see that Southern Poverty Law Center getting into the act, that is a group of uh, of shills, basically. They are uh, paid apologists. They, they are there to provide some kind of a, a halfway plausible academic-sounding explanation for whatever the counterinsurgency line inside the United States may may happen to be. So the fact that they point to this, we also have uh, the Secretary of Homeland Security, Napolitano, otherwise known as Totalitariano, and her idea that, right, the veterans and the right-wingers and all this. So uh, that's the atmospheric, and then you get uh, a certain number of patsies, right? Look out for patsies, because that's always how it's done. And, uh, you know, the, the attempt to try to mesh, uh, you know, al-Qaeda shows up uh, somewhere in North Carolina or whatever this is, right, and they're all from the FBI, uh, I think that, that indicates uh, a possible direction. I don't think it's conclusive, but the more you talk about it, the better it is, right? The more this is ventilated and aired and people are inoculated, uh, tell people that if this happens, uh, this is 99.99% this is, uh, guaranteed to be a top-down false flag operation using patsies, using moles inside the government, and then using those technicians. Right? If any, any big, heavy operations have to be done, they're going to have to use government resources, so that will require the presence of technicians and moles to bring that about. So it's a, it's a classical typology of what's going on. I don't think that's the only one, because there are competing 
priorities, right? There, there's a great desire to get something going vis-a-vis uh, somebody, right? Be it Sudan or Pakistan yeah, let me stop or you there. Russia or China. L- I want to look at the geopolitical operations outside North America, uh, and, and, and I agree, they're... They're going to hit us all. They're going to have stage terror overseas, stage terror domestically. They're going to have other economic crises, uh, hyped up uh, environmental crises, biological, medical. I agree, Webster. That's why I wanted to get your take on this. But when I interrupted you earlier, the British really are the masters of divide and conquer great game. That was even Orwell's job as a member of the Imperial Police, as you know, when he grew up in India, uh, before he had his first awakening to one level of the control paradigm, uh, but expanding uh, on that Webster, it was the British, now declassified and admitted, as you know, but the listeners may not, that staged over 90% of the terror attacks in Northern Ireland and in England, and it turned out that you would have the top three guys in the military IRA were all British intel, and that they were actually killing lower members of IRA if they wouldn't go out and kill British policemen as a pretext to stay in Northern Ireland. So it's very, very elementary to keep occupation imperial forces in the country, to occupy the United States with federal troops. They're going to need to stage terror to have the pretext that there's some type of hidden phantom menace that they're fighting. And you're right, uh, we have tracked British intel. I've actually had to deal years ago with attempted British intel uh, insertion into our operation. And I want the British to know we were aware of that. I'm now revealing this for the first time. Go ahead. Well, uh, in, in my book, again, 9-11 Synthetic Terror, I told the story of, of Agent Steakknife. He was codenamed Steakknife, and this was, this was somebody that the uh, MI5, MI6 had put into the top levels of the IRA, and his job was to, uh, was to kill people. And uh, they, were, you know, they also had agents in the, uh, the, this other side, right, the Protestant counter gang to the IRA counter The Orange. Right, the, well, the Orange, in this case, it's the, uh, the, the Protestant... Uh, extremist groups. So they were they were orchestrating a series of homicides and this went right up to Thatcher. In other words, Thatcher was absolutely informed of everything. Wonderful Maggie Thatcher, the goddess of the neocons and so many others, and the and the goddess of the free marketeers too, because they, they think she was the uh, the embodiment of their policies. And I guess she was. She was she was actively running these uh, these kinds of operations. I just wanted to point out to listeners, this is a fact that governments do this. And it's a historical fact, so we need people to realize this is an official Army field manuals that we showed people last week. We're just talking about something as a matter of fact as hammers and saws and lawnmowers being available at Home Depot. We're, I mean, we're stating like you know that ducks swim around in ponds or that fish swim around in lakes. Uh, I hope listeners understand what you're stating is a historical fact, Webster. Yeah, if, this is probably the most documented historical fact that uh, that we can bring to bear. I mean, it's been it's been confirmed, you know, hundreds of times and maybe thousands of times. Right, going back, my God, to the ancient world. So uh, I don't think there's any doubt about it. And and the the, the implication of, of of Thatcher in this stuff, and you know, we we can go back to the, the, the cases now in. The, in the United States, right, the various stunts that have been that have been done, and as time goes on, you get you get more and more background. So uh, certainly, uh, if there's terrorism, look to the, the intelligence agencies because that's the matrix. Our guest is Webster Griffin Tarpley. We'll look at the geopolitical front, then we're going to get a little bit more into eugenics and then some solutions. And I promise, next week, Webster Tarpley full hour on nothing but solutions. But things are moving so fast. They could stage a terror attack before the next time he's on. we got to cover this. Let me tell you a little bit about one of our great sponsors, HomeGain.com. This is the place to get you started buying or selling a home, finding a realtor, and getting any real estate questions answered. Go to HomeGain.com and see what I'm talking about. All you need to do is type in your home address, and you will get an instant free estimate of your home's value online. This is a great way to be able to monitor the value of your home. And again, it's absolutely free. There are tons of tools to help you. For instance, if you want to remodel your home, go to HomeGain.com. Use their Home Sale Maximizer to help you determine which home improvements can most increase your home's value before you put it on the market. For 10 years, these folks have been helping home sellers and buyers. Visit their link at InfoWars.com. Look for Max, the orange home gain gorilla, to help you with any real estate needs you might have. You'll love this site. It's HomeGain.com. H-O-M-E. 
G-A-I-N.com. Check them out today. In the last 30 minutes of the show, I'm also going to break down the incredible success of the Obama poster campaign. Hey, I'm flattered. Cindy Sheehan was listening to the show when I was talking about Webster. I don't know if Webster's really involved. I talked to him the other day. I talked to him Sunday. I talked to him yesterday, and he said, I'm trying to get Cindy Sheehan to go confront Obama. We need to fund her. We need to get behind her. And uh, here I'm doing Tarpley invitations while he's on with us. We love Tarpley around here. Because uh, I see him so much. He's in the last Obama film. I've known him for years. He's in the new Obama film. So I look at Tarpley every day. We interview him all the time. He's kind of like a little mascot, our little Leonardo da Vinci of the liberty movement uh, here at the office. I have another nickname for Tarpley. But he... <laughs> anyways, Tarpley, I... Alex, if I may, just one thing, just a correction.